Good evening viewers, good evening ladies and gentlemen, I'm Matthias Oftiku, news editor in Namibian Sun newspaper. Welcome to another exciting edition of the Evening Review Show. Today we have a range of topics to touch on, very exciting, especially the recently struck deal between the Namibian and German government on the reparations. But before we get to that, let's have a look at today's headlines in the Namibian Sun newspaper. Well, as indicated earlier on, it's it's an it's another exciting show. We're joined in studio by Honourable Joseph Kawandenge from the Nudo Party. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much for the invite. Yeah, it it uh, you you are becoming quite a habitual guest here. <laughs> yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh, today you are here on different matters, genocide issues. Of course, your party was the mover of the motion in 2006. So I think it's it's just fair that we we, we kickstart with your party. Um, wh what's been your reaction to the recent revelation that there was a deal struck? Well, for us as a political party, and especially as you said, the move of the motion, it mm -hmm. came as a, to as a total surprise to say the least. Mm -hmm. For starters, how do you conclude an agreement, whatever you call it, a settlement or agreement, without the involvement of the majority of those that really were uh, killed by von Trotter? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and there is this misconception sometimes when you say uh, the government is negotiating without the affected communities. Some mm -hmm. are coming and saying, but there are other people, Namas and Hereros, on the government negotiating table. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the question is, where are the majority of these two tribes, the leaders, the authentic leaders of these two tribes? And this is where we are having a problem as far as that is concerned and especially because we don't know what was agreed upon to mm -hmm. start with yeah uh, so it came as a, to as a total surprise yeah but there has been over the years the issue of some of the groups opting not to be part of this entire process mm -hmm. do you do you then are you then saying that everyone must be part of the committee or what is the real issue here well what were the fundamental issues and reasons why the vast majority of those that were affected by the extermination order were not party to uh, the negotiating table. What were the reasons? Surely they raised some, some quite uh, interesting observation right from the word go to say government should just play a facilitating role, a mediating role between the two governments. Mm -hmm. But the Namibian government cannot take over the negotiation between the German government and the Namibian government because the mo affected communities have leaders that will know best how to define areas where development is needed, where they will be in a better position to speak on behalf of their people. Mm -hmm. But government simply ignored this call for the past six years and they went ahead and started their negotiation without the vast majority of these uh, communities on board. Mm -hmm. One of the members of that negotiation committee, Mr. Fano Kapama, was sitting in that very chair where you are sitting now. He was sitting there yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the issues he, he, he mentioned was that <coughs> the fundamentals of the motion, the three fundamentals of the 2006 motion, which is the acceptance of genocide, the apology, and reparation, mm -hmm. that still forms part of the package they are negotiating for. So what then, 
triggers this division? Well, for starters, uh, and, and I must agree with him because I, I, I did uh, listen to his interview yesterday, that there is a fundamental difference between the interpretation of the motion uh, that was uh, uh, brought into parliament by our, light, uh, our late uh, president, Dr. Kwaima Riwako. Mm -hmm. What was the body and, and content of that motion? Mm -hmm. It was two or three aspects in that motion, and that was the issue of reparation and apology, and actually payment, mm -hmm. if you can call it like that. But what we are hearing that was, th th this deal that was struck in Germany, it's more about a reconcilia reconciliation agreement or some, something of that sort. Mm -hmm. But where was the reconciliation <laughs> uh, element within the motion that was moved by the late uh, president of NUTO in 2006? Mm -hmm. And reconciliation with whom? For effect, Germany continue over the years to, den to deny that there was even genocide to start mm -hmm. with. So they were very clear on that aspect to say, we are not going to acknowledge that there was genocide because the convention at the time was not there and what, 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 what. Mm -hmm. And we are not going to term this as reparation, but more of a development aid. Yeah. But there are two different distinctions between a reparation, a calls for reparation, and a development aid. They are not the same. Mm -hmm. So I, we, 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 from our side, we really don't know now what was agreed upon uh, in Berlin over the weekend. Uh, but we are hearing sketchy details that we are hearing is that it's it's more of a reconciliation uh, agreement. But with whom do we have to reconcile to start with? Yeah. What we are saying is that 80% of the overhead of people died at the hands of Germany. Um, l l more than 50% of the number of people died at the hands of Germany. Mm -hmm. So the reparation must form part of this negotiation. And a German government must come out very clearly and say and acknowledge that indeed genocide did took place and then we can talk from there but if they are denying that genocide took place what are these government of the republic of namibia even negotiating with the german <laughs> government yeah um mr kapama said yesterday that uh, following the deal struck over the weekend they will still come back and report to the affected communities um, it seems like uh, you, you are jumping the gun here you don't well, even know what was discussed well for starters the affected communities, who are they? L l let's define that. They are Hereros and Namas uh, speaking people of this country. But if you look at the composition of the government negotiating team, you have more of representatives from different clans among the Namas and the over Herero people that are part of this uh, uh, negotiating team. Mm -hmm. The question is, where are the vast majority of Namibians from the affected communities. And we are not only talking about Namibians, we are talking about uh, Namibians that are residing in Botswana, that went there because of, of that uh, war of genocide in 1904. We have Hereros and Namas that are residing in Botswana, and also in the diaspora outside there. They are products or they are descendants of that extermination order. That's why they are finding themselves there now. So if you as a government negotiate with Germany and the team that comprises the so-called representative of the Namibian people are primarily representative from different clans among the two communities. Are you saying really that is justifiable? Can you claim that you are consulting broadly uh, to bring the affected communities on board? I don't think so. And this is where we have a fundamental problem with the Namibian government. Because unfortunately, they have taken this issue out of proportion. They have made it a political issue while it has nothing to do with politics. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, the vast majority of those Namas and Hereros under the Nama Association and under the Overhero Traditional Authority are saying, but we are the majority and we are here, we are left behind. With whom are you negotiating on our behalf? And that is where the problem is. Mm -hmm. You seem to have an issue with the clan element. So. What makes up the affected communities? Isn't it the clans within those communities? Well, Ultimately, so the, anyone you choose will have to come from a clan in that community. Is that not the case? Yes, but then the scope of that clan. Mm -hmm. If I'm running a royal house, for instance, or the Kawandenge royal house, I'm primarily responsible for that Kawandenge Seni. That's it. That's what my definition of a clan is. 
But you will have Hereros and Namas that does not belong to that house mm -hmm. or that royal house for that matter. Where are they? Where, where do you leave them? Because they don't belong to that clan. Mm -hmm. They are Hereros, but they are not from that royal house. And they are the majorities as, as, as we speak now. That is, there is not even a debate about that. Mm -hmm. Those that are outside the royal houses are the majority among the two tribes. Yeah. Now, when they say, yes, we hear that you are there uh, and representing different clans, but we, those of us that are the majority, we are nowhere to be found. Yeah. That is where the problem is. Government has been told on numerous occasions that you cannot negotiate for us without us. Mm -hmm. Government should have, at that time, and it's my belief, have taken a different approach to say, whatever the outcome of this negotiation, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it should be a negotiation that is based on mutual trust. There must be integrity and respect for those that lost their lives and their land. Mm -hmm. But then government decided that, uh -uh, you come on the table, you, you don't come, we will proceed. But at the end of the day, once government signed all these things, to whom should, who are the beneficiaries at the end of the day? It's the same people, it's the same communities mm -hmm. that government is ignoring conveniently at this point in time. <laughs> well, what do you make of, of those who, who assert that uh, those groups that have distanced themselves from the negotiations are, are, are bitter because their preferred personalities were not appointed to this committee? Well, why will they be bitter? Because at the end of the day, uh, it is my contention that when my late president brought the motion to the National Assembly, mm -hmm. it was accepted as a national issue where all Namibians should participate, right? But it did not deduct from the reality that while the motion speaks about Namibia as a country, the extermination order was specific. The leaders of the communities that are not party to the negotiation cannot be bitter. They are simply saying, listen, government bring us the, the German government and the Namibian government together you remain here in the middle we negotiate directly with whoever killed us and you just facilitate that process because at the end of the day you are our government mm -hmm. uh, so but allow us to, to be on the table yeah so they cannot be really bitter as far as I'm concerned mm -hmm. uh, because at the end of the day they have constituencies that they are representing that they must go back to yeah. and this is not what we, what what is happening uh, as far as we are concerned government and, and, and someone told me where I read that the Honda will always glorify that part of his story <laughs> uh, that are, that is very good mm -hmm. and until the animal that was handed start writing that story yeah. itself the hunter will always glorify his role uh, in killing that animal and this is unfortunately what is happening in our namibian context as far as the genocide issue is concerned yeah your party issued a letter signed by yourself earlier today in which you say if i if i may quote you directly that um, we remain resolute in our opposition to any agreement signed by the two governments without the full participation on equal footing of the affected communities. You further say that it is imperative to clarify that there was no Namibian genocide, but a genocide which was committed against two ethnic, group, ethnic groups, namely the Nama and Omairo ethnic groups, that fits the definition of genocide. Mm -hmm. Can you just break that, break that down for us? Well, At one part, you want government to be involved, and then you say there was no Namibian genocide. You say government was only playing an intermediary role between. So you do the direct uh, negotiations. Just run, run us through that. Well, once I enter the Namibian parliament as a, as a MP, I, I raise my hand and I say, I will protect the constitution of the Republic of Namibia. So help me God. That's the oath that I take. Mm -hmm. And that's the oath that the president of this country took. Yeah. To represent all Namibians, mm -hmm. irrespective of whether they voted for the Swapo Party yeah. or not. Mm -hmm. But scaling down from that sacred oath, yeah. you come to different communities within Namibia. Mm -hmm. We could have been very hypocritical to have said, for instance, that the Namibian government must get out of this whole negotiating issue mm -hmm. and leave it, it uh, to the Hereros and Namas. That could have been very hypocritical. Mm -hmm. But that's not what we said. Yeah. 
we are saying yes government you have a role to play because you are our government you represent all of us irrespective of whether we voted for you or not mm -hmm. but while you are there make sure that the two sides that were warring and killing one another have the direct negotiation between the two of them and you facilitate mm -hmm. now there is a narrative somehow in this country uh, among those uh, communities that were not affected by genocide that thing that in order for this genocide issue to have value, it must be Nam Namibianized. Mm -hmm. It should be <laughs> become a Namibian issue. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, there are clear guidelines in terms of what constitutes genocide. If you go back and Google and find out. And that is that there must be intent to wipe out or kill an entire race yeah. or tribe. Mm -hmm. Now, the Herero and Namas are saying yes. As fellow Namibians, let's rally together, let's support one another, because this happens to fellow Namibians. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the nitty-gritty of negotiating in good faith, let's leave that to the two affected communities to do so, because they know their history, they know where their people are, and they know the challenges that their people are facing. Mm -hmm. And this is why uh, I made that statement to say, we cannot Namibia nice uh, the, the, the genocide issue, and make it a Namibian issue, re disregarding the communities that were affected by the extermination order. But isn't this then where the, the committee comes in for the affected people to have that uh, direct uh, negotiating access with the Germans? Well, and this is where we have a problem with the composition of the <laughs> negotiating committee. Because we, we still contend that they don't represent the vast majority of the two tribes that were actually killed and dispossessed of their land. And this is where we are having a serious problem with the composition of that committee. Because as I have alluded to, who comprise or who form that committee that now is negotiating uh, on behalf of the whole Namibians. And if these things was in good faith, government cannot remain silent three, four or five days after the German uh, media released certain uh, information about mm. the, the, the agreement signed. Mm. They are so silent about it. Why? Why will they not come up and either deny or confirm that, yes, there is something like that, but as a nation, our waiters, we will come back to you or whatever. What is so secret about it mm -hmm. that we don't know? And when they were initialing these documents in Berlin, mm -hmm. were they really initialing these documents in Berlin first before they can come back to the affected community and say, uh, this is the offer on the table. Now, can we go ahead and initial it or sign it? So the deal is already done. Then you come and just inform. Mm -hmm. Is this how we should work? Yeah. And I don't believe so. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so, so you are saying that uh, the manner in which the committee was appointed and the appointing authority, that should not have been the appointing authority. No, the appointing authority, I don't have a problem with the mm -hmm. appointing authority because I said, as a president of the Republic of Namibia, he is there to look after the well-being of all Namibians, yes. irrespective of our political differences or whether we voted for him or we did not vote for him. We have only one president in this country, mm -hmm. and that is the current sitting president. Mm -hmm. There is no debate about that. Mm -hmm. However, the composition of the negotiating team or committee, to say the least, it's more of a committee that has swap of functionaries in that committee mm -hmm. from the affected communities and leaving everybody else out why is that why did the president of the republic more or less politicize even the composition of that committee because surely when you talk about the affected community you talk about people that are coming from different political affiliations mm -hmm. but look at that committee and there is no scrap of 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 of, of denying it yeah. The negotiating committee currently that is there, uh, that represent the clans or royal houses, all these are members of the ruling party. What are, what, what are they saying, really? Mm -hmm. what, what about the rest <laughs> of the community that does not fall part either of being a member of Swapo or being members of the clan or that royal houses? And this is where we have a fundamental problem, and we have said it on in various occasions to the president, that whatever outcome you bring on the table, but primarily because of the composition of this committee, mm -hmm. will have some serious reservations uh, in terms of whether really 
it was negotiated in good, in good faith or not. Is, is that why in your statement issued today in the last paragraph you say, we remain vigilant and prepare for action should this so-called agreement become a reality? Yes. What do you mean? Well, for starters, as, 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 as a community and as a political party that represents the vast majority of those that were killed, we reserve the right to take peaceful action, actually, mm -hmm. to express our dismay and dissatisfaction with the agreement or so-called agreement that mm -hmm. was signed. Because, mind you, whatever that agreement contained, yeah. it is there for prosperity. Mm -hmm. Once it is signed, it is binding us in the future generation to that. But Germany is on record, having said that, that they will never recognize genocide. Yeah. They are on record having said that they will not ever apologize. Mm -hmm. They are on record having said that they will not pay reparation. They will rather uh, bring projects yeah. and what to the Namibian mm -hmm. people. Now, if, and we believe that that is the content of the agreement mm -hmm. that have been signed, that the affected community will be given projects in their respective regions where they reside. Are you saying that is that really sufficient enough mm -hmm. to the affected communities? Mm -hmm. And is that the letter and spirit of the resolution of NUTO led by the late president in 2006 that was accepted by the Namibian uh, parliament? Mm -hmm. We tend to disagree bitterly on that score. Why don't you want to reconcile? With who? With Germany. Or Germans. <laughs> no, we, we, we don't have... Because well, you, you are saying that the reconciliation in, in, in when the motion was moved in 2006 featured no way. Well, how do you reconcile, Matthias, with mm -hmm. a person? Mm -hmm. If a person has wronged you, the person must show remorse mm -hmm. for the action. Even if I clap you, I give you a nice clap, uh, and then later on I say really sorry then I'm saying I have done an act that I'm not proud of mm -hmm. and I have realized, uh, realized that I must apologize. Mm -hmm. That's a genuine apology. Yeah. But if you are telling me that I have not wronged you, I have not killed you, I will not pay reparation, and yet you want to initial a document that says reconciliation, uh, with whom are you reconciling? <laughs> because in, in the first instance, you are not agreeing to the action before reconciliation. Mm -hmm. So, and this is where we have a, a, a fundamental problem really with awaiting that reconciliation. What some Germans, Namibians that are in this country to this day, they are also here, but they are even denying that genocide did even take place. Mm -hmm. They are denying that the farms on which they are, are now at this point, present time, uh, they did not get it through forceful means. Mm -hmm. While the vast majority of the people, the Namas and Hereros that were staying in those areas are today in the reserves without land. Now, with whom are we going to reconcile if Germany and Germans in particular don't acknowledge first and foremost that genocide did take place and then move on from that? Even we are hearing that the president of the Federal Republic of Germany will come to Namibian parliament mm -hmm. before this uh, uh, agreement is initial and what, what. Yeah. What is he going to come to in the Namibian parliament? Mm -hmm. We will raise hell in that parliament, <laughs> I'm telling you. Because we are going to tell him right there and there that why did you come to the Namibian parliament to come do what? First and foremost, there must be a, 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 an apology. There must be a recognition that such act uh, do, took place. And we have to talk about reparation, not development aid, not about projects. Yeah. Yes. So he's not welcome here? No, unfortunately, he's not welcome here as far as NUTO is concerned. Mm -hmm. And we are going to have a mass protest as soon as he comes to this country to make sure and illustrate that the majority of the affected um, communities are really not happy with how things have gone. Mm -hmm. And the Namibian government must realize that descendants of the Nama and of Herero people mm -hmm even not in our lifetime, maybe in another lifetime, yeah. we'll still continue fighting tooth and nail to make sure that what is due to their forefathers are given. Yeah. So there is no two ways about that. We are standing by that and we are rejecting whatever has been negotiated on our behalf without our participation. For, you know, and, and, and we are not going to relent on that one. Yeah. Yes.
Um, just uh, as we move towards the end of the how do how do we move? How do we reach common grounds to move forward in this matter? Well, I don't know. Is it perhaps not too late for a common ground? I don't know, because once you sign something that is binding, and mind you, that whatever is signed between the German and Namibian government must come to the Namibian Parliament for ratification. Mm -hmm whatever that word means, ratification. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we are very keen to find out the content mm -hmm. of, of, of that agreement. Yeah. Um, and having read it, we will be in a better position to say, I, can we really accept this? But on face value, we c seems to have fundamental <laughs> differences with that. Mm -hmm. The Namibian government must make sure, if we are to move forward, yeah. that the affected communities must get on board. The majority of the leaders, those that have the majority of the people that have been that have been left behind, must get on board this train, because at the end of the day, as Africans, we trust our leaders so much. Uh, it's an African tradition that when your leader talks, you follow that order. Yeah. But if your leader is not part of the of whatever is brought for you on the table as food then you just stand outside and say but i don't know what is this there is no way that we will accept a question of development aid coupled with projects to the affected communities in the form of development aid yeah. and, and and really should that be the content of that agreement maybe the government I itself knows will know what to do with that money as far as we are concerned we, we, we cannot be party to that. Yeah. Yes. Just as an exit question, if, if you were pre the president of the Republic right now, what type of reconciliatory move would you make right now to ensure that the affected communities find common grounds? Well, knowing the, the country president very well, um, I wonder whether he will race beyond a personality cult and really extend a helping, a, a, a welcoming hand to the affected communities. But if I was the president at this point in time, I would call the leaders of those affected communities and say, this is the deal that I managed to broker between us and the German government because of A, B, C, D, 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 D. Uh, but in the interest of Namibia and Namibians in particular, can we not move forward together and accept this agreement as it is because of a b c d mm -hmm. but i don't think the president of the republic will really raise up to or above pettiness yeah. and personality cult i don't think so because it's not in his nature for him it's either you take it or leave it mm -hmm. but that's not a good trait of a leader as far as i'm concerned yeah, yeah so but that is what i will do if i was him Mr. thank you very much for your input thank you very much it's a pleasure